Hello everybody, today I will be talking about the type of upgrade you can make on a Dell XPS 8300 computer. So uh, what you see on the left is a, is a diagram of the Dell XPS 8300 uh, motherboard. So in this part I will be talking about the memory upgrade you could add a um, DDR3 240 pin memory module on this computer and um, you could add a 1 gigabyte, 2 gigabyte, 4 gigabyte or even an 8 gigabyte um, RAM module, a DDR3 um, 240 pin RAM modules on this computer so the maximum amount of memory you can have on this uh, chipset is 32 gigabytes with uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM for each uh, mod for each slot DIMM slot and uh, if you're using six if you uh, only want to use 4 gigabyte DIMMs then the possible uh, combos you can get using four slots would be four gigabytes, six gigabyte, eight gigabyte, ten gigabyte, twelve gigabyte, fourteen gigabyte, and sixteen gigabytes. And the uh, eight gigabyte uh, RAM modules are quite expensive for um, DDR3. So you want the DDR3, um, you want PC 10 0 600 uh, DDR3 RAM modules in this computer because uh, the maximum uh, which is supported in terms of bandwidth is 1333 megahertz so you don't want to get anything you don't want to get more frequency than that you don't want to get a PC 12800 which is 1600 megahertz just want to get the PC 10 600 in it and as for um, upgrading storage devices I mean just the storage devices which are available with this uh, computer you have four SATA slots so um, you could look at the diagram and look at number um, 11 that would be SATA 0. Number uh, 13 would be SATA 1. So SATA 0 and SATA 1 are capable of our SATA 6 ports. So these ports will be capable of transferring files at 6 gigabits per second or 750 megabytes per second. But in reality, uh, you'll probably get about 550 megabytes per second uh, using a SSD drive, a 2.5 inch SSD drive and look at the diagram again you see number 15 which is a SATA 2 and number 17 on the board is SATA 3 so SATA 2 and SATA 3 are use uh, the older SATA 3 ports so these SATA ports will be capable of transferring files at 3 gigabits per second or 375 megabytes per second. But in reality, you'll probably get about 250 megabytes per second if, you're, if you are using a 2.5 inch SSD. You could use a 2.5 inch SSDs in the faster SATA 6 ports. And you could use a, and you could use a, a mechanical hard drive, an optical disk drive, in the slower uh, SATA three ports. So that's what you could do if you don't want to like um, expand your SATA ports or add more SATA devices.
Now I'll be talking about storage device expansion. expansion. So uh, you could expand the number of storage devices you can add to your computer system. So by default you have two three and a half inch bays and you have two five and a quarter inch bays. So one of the bays is being occupied by a five and a quarter inch optical drive. I think it's a DVD R drive. And one of the bays is being occupied with a 3.5 inch hard drive, whatever that may be. It could be one gigabyte, two gigabyte, 500 gigabyte, who knows. So um, what you can do is, one of the first things you could do is you can uh, add a five and a quarter inch um, adapter which uh, can uh, where, where you can add a uh, five and a quarter inch slim optical drive if you wish to use an optical drive and underneath that bay underneath the, the slot you, there's a, where, a place where you can add a three and a half inch hard drive so you could put that at the very top and take out the five and a quarter inch optical drive and you can take that out and you can have two slots you could have two devices in there a five and a quarter inch slim DVD drive or optical disc and a five, three and a half inch hard drive so beneath that bay you could add a uh, Underneath it, there's another three and a five and a quarter inch drive bay, and there you can add another adapter, which would enable you to add a um, three and a half inch hard drive and two two and a half inch um, hard drives or SSDs. So with that adapter, you could put two SSDs or two and a half inch hard drives at, on the top just slide it in and slide in the hard drive three and a half inch hard drive in the front and you could screw that in the hard drive you have to screw in with the adapter but the SSDs just snap right in you just push it in and that's it and you could put that in the five and a quarter inch bay on the second five and a quarter inch bay underneath the underneath the optical disc you could do that and in addition to that so then if you did that you would have five SATA devices so that's a problem you only have four SATA connectors on your motherboard so uh, you could buy a um, four port SATA 3 PCIe 2.0 X1 controller card which you see on the bottom right and you can connect that to any PCIe port on your um, motherboard so you have three uh, PCI small PCIe ports on your motherboard and you can put it into e any one of those three ports and now you would ha be able to add eight SATA devices and the SATA devices you can add on that uh, card would be using SATA 6 however you cannot boot from this so make sure all your bootable devices like if you want to use your SSD as a boot device make sure you put it into one of the SATA ports on your motherboard so um, you would have eight SATA devices altogether. So the SATA devices you want to use for like storing stuff, that's fine. You could put it on. You could put it on the controller card. And but the controller card doesn't support RAID, so it just supports individual hard drives or SSDs. Okay. So uh, with that out of the way, you still have two. Uh, three and a half inch bays um, for one of the three and a half inch bays you could just add a 
regular two gigabyte or three gigabyte hard drive on that uh, three and a half inch bay and underneath it you could add a uh, three four three point five inch hard drive or a three point five inch adapter where you could put two two and a half inch hard drives or two 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 and a half inch SSDs which you see on the bottom left corner so I'll leave all the links for all the parts you can buy to make for this upgrade to make for to uh, upgrade your computer basically so if you add all the parts in this configuration you will be able to add four 2.5 inch SSDs or 2.5 inch hard drives 3.3 3 3.5 inch hard drives and a slim optical drive which will give you a total of eight devices Now I'll be talking about uh, the graphics card and the power supply. So first I'll be talking about the graphics card. So you have one PCI Express X16 slot on your Dell XPS 8300 computer, which you can see as is highlighted in the blue rectangle the diagram so um, you could put uh, basically any large graphics card on your computer because uh, your case could will support it so you could put a um, GeForce RTX 2070 graphics card a GeForce GTX 1060, GeForce GTX 1660, etc., or whatever you want to put in. It all depends on how much money you want to spend. So uh, the graphics card may be a um, may support the PC, PCI Express X16 3.0, but they're all backwards compatible, so it doesn't really matter. You, sh you should still be able to use the graphics card in, in your computer. Because they're all backwards compatible either way. So if you want to add a powerful graphics card, you may want to upgrade the power supply. The power supply that came with this computer is uh, 460 watts. So it might be adequate for most um, or some graphics cards. So if you want to add like a, a lesser graphics card, like a GeForce uh, GT1030 or something like that, um, a 460 watt power supply should be, should be enough. And if you uh, don't have enough power and if you don't have enough power and you buy a graphics card that draws too much power, then the computer would just crash. That can happen. So. I recommend that if you get a really powerful graphic card, you also upgrade your power supply unit. But if you always, um, if you want more juice, you can always upgrade it with standardized uh, parts. So any standard ATX power supply should work with this computer. You don't have to buy the, you don't have to buy Dell's um, power supply. You could just buy any off-the-shelf power supply, like an EVGA power supply, Corsair power supply, etc. Whatever. So I do recommend that you put in at least a 600 watt power supply if you want to use a powerful graphics card in this computer. 
a 600 watt power supply should be more than enough but if you want to add more power then you could add a larger power supply if you want it's up to you but it's really not going to matter okay uh, one of the issues you will have with this computer using it in uh, Windows 10 is that uh, you have problems with the network card or the Ethernet card this will be a problem you will uh, run across using Windows 10 so um, you will probably want to get a um, a gigabit Ethernet PCI Express card for your computer basically I did because I was having problems with mine so I just replaced the Ethernet card. I just put the Ethernet card in and stopped using the old one which was built into the motherboard and now my uh, wired Ethernet connection works perfectly and the reason for this is because um, there were no new drivers written for this for the network card which is built into your motherboard because uh, this computer was produced around 2011 and um, the operating system that this computer came with was Windows 7 and Windows 10 did not exist back then so the driver which was written for um, the built-in network card is for Windows 7 not Windows 10 and some uh, drivers for Windows 7 work fine on Windows 10 however uh, but uh, some drivers written for Windows 7 um, maybe uh, quirky on Windows 10 you know it it, it, it really depends because uh, when uh, people were transitioning from Windows XP to Windows 7 some of the drivers from XP worked on Windows 7 while others did not work and some of the programs didn't work on Windows 7 as well so you just keep uh, keep a note of that and as for the CPU um, this computer came with the Intel i7 2600 3.4 gigahertz um, socket 1155 CPU so it already came with a very good CPU however you can upgrade it to a Intel i7 2600K if you want a, um, a slight uh, performance in increase the difference is going to be about 8% for a i7 2600K but if you wish to overclock it you may get a performance increase of at least 18% but um, you cannot up you cannot uh, overclock um, stuff on your motherboard because Dell doesn't Dell motherboards don't allow you to do that so if you want to overclock you have to do it on your um, you would have to do it in the operating system there are some software which enable you to overclock your computer when you're running your operating system so you could just keep a note of that so um, yeah it's not really gonna lead to a big performance issue if your performance increase if you're not gonna like overclock it so um, for me I didn't overclock the CPU I just left it as it is but it's up to you if you want to get every um, ounce of or gram of power from this computer you can you can do that you can add the best graphics card in it you could add 32 gigabytes of RAM you could put eight uh, storage devices and you would have a pretty uh, up-to-date computer which would probably serve you well for the next uh, few years okay um, thanks for watching by ace 1000ks signing out